What's up you guys? Welcome to Silicon Valley Girl. Today we're going to talk about top business ideas for 2020 and uh, then are going to be those obvious ideas that you can think of yourself like starting a restaurant or a car wash. We're going to talk about ideas based on recent trends, recent growing markets and uh, if you're interested, continue watching this video. Oh, by the way, very important rule. If you decide to start your own business, your motivation shouldn't be because Marina said it's gonna be a great business. Your motivation should be, wow, I love this market. I've been on it for a while, or maybe you've thought of it for a while, and then Marina mentioned something that is growing. Maybe this is the right time. Maybe this is the trigger for me to go and start something there. So always listen to your heart. So obvious, right? But that's the only thing they're gonna dig you through all the problems that you're gonna encounter when starting a business and this will make you successful. Okay, let's do it. First business idea is starting a co-working space. And I know if you live in a big city like San Francisco, Los Angeles, there are plenty of co-working spaces, but I also find that when I travel to smaller cities, I struggle to find the right place to work out of. Um, Starbucks, yes, it's a pretty common place to work from, like a lot of people bring their laptops, but I just don't like this barista coffee machine sound. It distracts you from anything you do. I don't like people walking around all the time. Sometimes babies come in and start crying. You know, there are so many factors that just distract you and I wouldn't mind paying uh, what I pay to Starbucks and like coffee fees to a small co-working space. What I've seen in other countries, what people do, they rent an apartment and convert it into co-working space just for friends and they come and work out of there. Of course, if your landlord allows that. But people all over the world are looking for smaller places to work out of. And I remember when we were back in St. Petersburg, we were looking for a smaller office, like a 100 square feet office, and we couldn't find it. So in some cities, there's definitely a problem with finding the right place to work out of. And especially because a lot of people are starting to work from home and there are so many people who just don't wanna stay at home for 24 hours a day. Um, co-working space is a great opportunity. The next business idea hit 74,000 Google searches last month. Do you know what it is? It's posture corrector. Our normal posture these days is this, right? This is a normal posture and it is not normal for our bodies. This is why um, a lot of people go to, to see chiropractors. That's why I have a massage weekly because otherwise my shoulders are just stuck. Posture corrector is your business idea. So you've probably seen them on Facebook. You put this small device on your back and it vibrates whenever your posture is um, incorrect. I haven't seen a lot of businesses in that space and uh, with this trend, 74,000 searches a month, there's definitely space out there for another company. And with any market that is just starting to develop, I think there's always space for like two or three big companies because I remember when car sharing business just started um, to become big, uh, there was Uber and then suddenly Lyft appeared and I was like, wow, uh, why would people start another company in this market? And now Lyft is huge. So it's because, you know, you can always make something a little better. You can always make another better offer for your customer and this is how you get clients on ever-growing market. Business number three, and uh, here's another piece of data for you. Uh, apps related to diet and fitness account for 3.3% of all apps on the Apple Store. What that means, everybody understands that exercise is important. Uh, everybody understands that the best way to gain muscle strength is to exercise every day. But actually starting to exercise on any taken day is a huge problem. And what I feel is when I get new sports clothes, when I buy a new fitness course, when I download another app, that's another trigger for me to actually start exercising. And I think this is why this market has been growing so steadily. And if you're a fitness coach, for example, and you have your offline clients, I think the first step into going to this bigger market of online fitness instruction is to tell your clients like, hey, um, I was thinking you come to train every day at like 7 p.m. Why don't you take 
take my online class um, to exercise every morning as well because this is a great start of your day and for just $20 a month I would provide you with like monthly set of exercises um, to do at home uh, and this is your first step because you don't have to rush and uh, create a mobile app right away and then you will think of ways to evolve this online thing because again it's growing really fast number four just listen to the market size 3.4 billion dollars this is the market size for men's cosmetics and there is a niche that has been growing really fast 1 billion dollar market remember dollar shave club and all that stuff 1 billion dollar market shaving cosmetics why because 39 percent of men in america have beards and this is the whole new market you start with razors you start with creams and then you go all the way to beard oils to different things that you can decorate your beard with one billion dollar market and i think this business compared to some others that i mentioned before um, it's pretty easy to start because if you're already in cosmetics business there's just another formula that you would need to create and like another marketing strategy but it's always good to be on a growing market it's always great to start before it reaches its peak and i still think it's on this growth curve right now so this is your opportunity business number five and another piece of data failure rate for new restaurants can be as high as 90 percent but what if you love cooking what if you like food industry there is a solution for you with 10 to 20 percent failure rate which is like almost nine times lower food truck business you see those food trucks outside for example here in san francisco we have those streets where every day from i don't know 11 a.m to 2 p.m we have several food trucks come over and bring uh foods from you know different cuisines we have like russian um, truck we have um, kimchi or whatever like we have so many things this business is pretty easy to start because you don't need to rent a place you don't need to hire a lot of people you just rent a food truck or you buy a food truck depending on your uh, financial resources and um, then you figure out where you can go and then every day you can just go to either the same place or different places and again because the failure rate is really low I think it's a great way to start your way in the food industry and let's jump into the next area of the food industry that's healthy fast food if you've ever been to italy and if you've ever traveled by car in italy uh, you've probably been to their gas stations with uh, that prosciutto and mozzarella and uh, arugula salad and uh, those uh, truffle oil sandwiches like this is the best place to eat in the whole Italy like those car stops are amazing what happens in the US when I travel from San Francisco to LA by car I take four boiled eggs um, celery hummus uh, beans because otherwise I would be stuck with McDonald's and Subway and healthy fast food is such a problem if you are outside the big city and I think this is a huge opportunity especially guys if you live between San Francisco and Los Angeles so many people who are worried about their health and who want to eat healthy they struggle so if you go to one of those places where they have all the restaurants and start a healthy fast food I am I would be the first one who would advertise you for free first of all and then um, please research this opportunity like even airports I don't know, London Airport they have bread a manger I don't know what's the right way to pronounce it but they have this amazing uh, crab salad they have avocado salad what do you find in a US airport you find a lot of sandwiches you find soups that you don't really want to eat because uh, they don't smell well so healthy fast food please let me know when you started please let me know where you started and um, I will make a story on Instagram about you because uh, let's make America healthy please <laughs> the next business idea reusable bags and uh, yes huge trend right now and I think this is one of the best trends I've seen uh, people tell me on Instagram like they DM me Marina stop using plastic glasses whenever they see me or maybe like a plastic bottle they would DM me and remind me that we have to be mindful uh, about our planet and I know that there is a lot that can be done and Finland is a great example here they do a lot of recycling in the US I think California is uh, is a great example in terms of you cannot get a free bag when you do your grocery 
groceries um, you need to pay at least like 10 cents to get a bag and in a lot of shops the bags uh, would be paper bags instead of plastic bags which is amazing and uh, with this 10 to 20 um, cents fee people are encouraged to bring their reusable bag and this is actually a huge business opportunity because you know reusable bags tend to be bulky they tend to be huge and you wouldn't really carry them with you but if you make it foldable if you make it stylish so I wouldn't need to carry like my um, standard bag I would just take my reusable bag and put my things into it like this would be amazing or a convertible bag this is a huge business right now and uh, I see a lot of people doing it and if you're from the US look at your local market if you're from another country look at your local market as well because I think uh, this market is underdeveloped in a lot of countries outside the US the next business, Smart Apparel. Do you remember there was this hoodie uh, that was for travelers? And I think a lot of people, like every second person in um, Silicon Valley had it because we travel so much. It had an inflatable pillow that was inside that um, hoodie. The hood could be converted into something that protected you from light. Uh, it had a charger. It had like everything you need when you travel. And there were thousands of those uh, hoodies sold online through platforms like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, like all of those uh, crowdfunding platforms. And smart apparel industry is projected to hit $4 billion by 2024. And if you're a designer, for example, and uh, you want to continue in the design business, but you think that, you know, just making another sweatshirt or another t-shirt wouldn't be that lucrative, Probably what I would do, I would partner with somebody who knows how to create technological stuff. Like I recently met guys who are doing t-shirts that change their color. So you don't have to buy like five different t-shirts, you buy just one. And there is this uh, fabric that changes its color. And there are two people working on it, um, a designer and a guy who knows how to create this fabric. So finding someone who can bring technology into your designer business could be a game changer. Because again, people are looking for smart clothes. I would love a um, sweatshirt that will warm itself up when it's cold outside or when it's hot outside it will cool itself and I know there are a lot of people trying to build something like this so go ahead check out Indiegogo check out um, Kickstarter um, look what people are buying and then find a partner and create something amazing of your own for this market okay let's move on to the last business idea and uh, maybe you've been listening to this and you're like Marina okay what you're suggesting is pretty um, hard to start because yes you need uh, initial capital you need to find a co-founder you need to be good at technology blah 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 okay here's a simple business idea it's a slightly more well it's not a slightly more but it's a very competitive market it's travel market and uh, we've gone from um, brick and mortar travel agencies one would go to people and talk to them to booking everything online but there is a niche in an online booking business that i think needs some improvement and what i'm talking about is actually selling rewards tickets what's happening a lot of us i bet you to have um, a credit card that accumulates miles like for every dollar you get like one mile and uh, a lot of people don't travel as much like I travel a lot and I use all of my miles but I also have a friend who has 600,000 miles and uh, he would do like a post on Facebook every other month saying like I have free upgrades for this and that airline do you want to take them uh, and this friend is by the way uh, Gil Pancina who was one of my videos he's just giving them away but I also know that pe some people would want to make uh, some income out of it and um, what you could do you could buy more miles from those people who just don't use them and um, sell reward flights to people like me who are looking for cheaper business classes so for example I recently booked a flight from San Francisco to Munich for I think it was like hundred eighty thousand miles plus five dollars in taxes I ran out of my miles because I bought a ticket for myself and a ticket for my husband and that was it and if I want to fly somewhere else I would need to buy those flights from a travel agent and I have an agency that I work with but I think sometimes they're overpriced and I reach out to them and I tell them like hey I want to fly from San Francisco to whatever they buy miles from somebody else so they've already bought those miles uh, for say a thousand dollars and they buy a ticket for me with those miles and uh, price at say 
$1,500. So $500 is uh, your money for your services. And I think it's a great idea. I think there's a lot of potential there because a lot of people have those miles. But I also feel that there is a ceiling to this business because it's very manual. Um, but yeah, that's something you can start right away. You can start it right now, tomorrow or next week. And by the way, guys, if you're watching this video and you have thoughts like, I know some other great business ideas that I want to share with the audience. It's a great way to start a YouTube channel because these videos, uh, when you tell people about top five, top seven businesses, tend to perform really well. Uh, I will leave a link below to my course uh, that would help you start a YouTube channel. We're going to talk about creating thumbnails, editing your videos, coming up with topics for your videos, posting them, uh, writing scripts, all of that, like everything you need to kickstart your channel in 14 days. The link will be below and I will see you in that course. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. See you soon. Please smash the red subscribe button down below uh, to not miss my next vlogs. See you soon. Bye-bye.